didn't know how that'd be Brother Gene singing before I preached, but that's pretty good. That's pretty good. Second Thessalonians, if you would, this morning. We'll soon forget it. <laughs> yeah, you never know in this life. I'm supposed to be in the hospital bed this morning. Here I am down here. I really wanted that operation. I needed that operation. Still do. Still do. I'll get it sometime, I guess, Lord willing. Get my health straightened up enough to have it, but it's good to be here. Glad that you all have gotten back in the groove of things, and I hope it just continues on until the Lord comes. In uh, 2 Thessalonians, Chapter 2, we'll begin reading in verse 1. Now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, and by our gathering together unto him, that you be not soon shaken in mind or be troubled, neither by spirit, nor by word, nor by letter as from us, as that the day of Christ is at hand. Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come except there come a falling away first, and that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called God or that is worshiped, so that he is God, sitteth in the temple of God and showeth himself that he is God. Remember ye not that when I was yet with you, I told you these things? And now ye know what withholdeth that he might be revealed in his time. For the mystery of iniquity doth already work. Only he who now letteth will let until he be taken out of the way. And then shall that wicked be revealed whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. Even him whose coming is after the working of Satan with all power and signs and lying wonders and with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish, because they receive not the love of the truth that they might be saved. And for this cause, God shall send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie. And they all might be damned who believed not the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. I wanna to speak to you this morning on the subject of the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. An event that you and I look forward to tremendously. An event that one day is going to take place that you and I think about, uh, I guess I do, every day. And sometime during the day, think about the fact that Jesus may come. Now, Paul had written this letter to the uh, Thessalonians, and well, actually in both letters, and was dealing with the subject of the rapture. Some, as we read in verse 2 of chapter 2, had been lying about what Paul had taught them Amen. and they sent out letters and they attached Paul's name to it. And what they were saying was that those saints in that day were living uh, in the time of the day of the Lord that they were living actually uh, in the great tribulation period. And it says there in verse 2 that uh, he warns them or encourages them 
uh, that you be not soon shaken in mind. Salio, uh, in the Greek, a word that means great anxiety or pain. Now, it's been mentioned about some things that are going on in uh, the world today that uh, certainly are troublesome, and grieving, to, uh, and it vexes a righteous soul, things that are going on. But now, uh, if I were to stand here and tell you and able to convince you that uh, here just in a day or two, uh, the great tribulation period is going to start and you're going to be in it, then you, you really would be vexed. And, uh, you know, a lot of things that you may be worrying about today, you'd soon forget that and you'd begin to worry about this up. I mean, big, <clears throat> great hailstones of uh, uh, fire falling down out of heaven and killing people and uh, the earth opening up and swallowing people and islands uh, sinking into the seas and uh, all of these things uh, that uh, pertain to the wrath of God, uh, I'm sure that they would be on your mind. I'm sure that you wouldn't be uh, worried about your future education if you uh, are in school. Uh, I, I would imagine you'd think that'd be the least of your worries. You wouldn't be thinking about your job promotions. You wouldn't be thinking about all that stuff that uh, is so important. But you'd be thinking about the wrath of God. <clears throat> well, Paul did not believe that the saints of God would be involved in that those who were alive and remain. Now, there are some saints that are going to be saved during that time period, and they will have some involvement, but that has nothing to do with you and I. And what you and I think today, and what you and I are concerned about today, you and I have the blessed promise that at any time, and at any moment, Jesus may come in the clouds. No way. In the Bible, are you and I given any date or time period to that we can go off of and expect the Lord uh, to come because Paul said he's coming as a thief in the night. I've dealt with these. And uh, I had people stealing off of me for almost a year. And uh, they never did come when I expected them. They <laughs> never did. We finally caught them one time. They came when they didn't expect me to be there, but, but uh, finally got them. But uh, that's the way they operate, you see. Well, the Lord is coming as a thief in the night at a time unexpected. And I think it disarms the lives of the children of God to be given a message that the Lord is coming <clears throat> at a time you expect it. Some will say he's coming at the middle of the tribulation period. Some say he comes at the end of the tribulation period. Well, if that were so, uh, you could pretty well expect him, couldn't you? And he wouldn't come like a thief in the night, would he? Now somebody may argue, well, you really don't know when the tribulation is going to start. Really? <laughs> I mean, we're talking about the full-on wrath of God. And one expects me to believe that they can be in that and not even know they're there? I don't think so. So Christ could come at any time Amen. before the tribulation period starts. Amen. That's known as the pre-tribulation rapture uh, belief, and that's what I am. Amen. And by God's grace, that's where I'm going to stay. 
I don't need to be in these other places. I'm going to stay right where I'm at. Had a very good friend of mine, every time I see him, he tries to change my mind on it. Well, you changed yet? And I said, no. I'm not changed. And I said, uh, uh, as far as you're concerned, you're not changed either because you're going up with me. I don't think so. I, yeah, yeah, we're all going together. Yeah. So Paul then is dealing with uh, saints that are uh, worried. Well, he says some things here uh, concerning the uh, rapture or the gathering of ourselves uh, with the Lord. Uh, he brings up some things. He brings up the uh, Antichrist. Now, some believe the Antichrist is here now. No, he might be here, but he's not right. doing his thing. He hasn't had, doesn't have control yet. But uh, this day is yet in the future. There must come a falling away first. And then the son of man or the son of perdition be revealed. Who is going to oppose and exalt himself above all that is called God or that is worshipped. So that he as God sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. And Paul says, look here, this time is not now because you can see evidently that the Antichrist is not ruling now. It's not taking place now. This is yet future, he tells uh, the Thessalonians. And uh, he's trying to comfort them in the fact that they're not uh, within the <coughs> time period of the wrath of God here upon the earth. Now, secondly, he brings up uh, the Holy Spirit. Now, in verse 6, ye know that, ye know what withholdeth that he might be revealed in his time. For the mystery of iniquity doth already work. Amen. Only he who now letteth will let until he be taken out of the way. Amen. Paul says there's a lot of sin out there. And there are sinners, there are great sinners out there. You know, we've had antichrist here on the earth since Christ was here. Yes. Those who oppose Christ. Right. Yeah. He's not talking about all of those. He's talking about the antichrist. That he's come. And when he comes, God is going to Remove the salt of the earth, which that's you, if you're saved. That's all the saved. Some people have the crazy idea that that only means Baptist. That's not true. Anybody who has put their faith in the Lord Jesus Christ as Savior is going to be raptured out. Oh, yes. Amen. oh with his church which you uh, make up. But you are, as the salt of the earth, going to be removed, and also the Holy Spirit of God, who has a restraining power over the world. Now you think it's bad now. You let the Holy Spirit draw back and let man do everything they want to do, it really be bad. Right. <clears throat> so because you're here and the Holy Spirit's here, that can't take place. That's right. Amen. But when we're gone and he's gone and God allows the devil to uh, work in this great sinful way uh, with the Antichrist. 
it's going to be bad. And then be time to be worried. And then it says, and then shall that wicked be revealed whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth and shall destroy uh, with the brightness of his coming. And even though uh, the Antichrist is going to do his work, uh, payday is coming. <clears throat> and all sinners and all devils and the devil himself shall face a righteous God and be condemned forever in the lake of fire. That burneth forever and ever. So you and I, as far as the uh, tribulation is concerned, have no worry. Unless somebody convinces you otherwise, from the Bible you have no worry about being in this great tribulation. Uh, he wrote in 1 Thessalonians, chapter 5. He says, But of the times and of the seasons, brethren, you have no need that I write unto you. <clears throat> now, if Paul knew when that day was, he wouldn't have wrote that, would he? There's a lot of uh, interest in the end times right now. A lot of interest. And a lot of people have their uh, opinions and so forth and uh, will uh, tell you what they think. But I don't find in my Bible, I don't know what kind of Bible you got, but in my Bible, I don't find the New Testament church in the tribulation. Amen. I don't find it there. And I believe that to be mighty curious that if we are there, that God never says anything about us, that God never gives any instruction to us uh, concerning that time period. I mean, we are the Lord's church. We talk about that. We're the Lord's work. And we all believe here today that God is receiving glory out of his work. And surely, if we're going to be in the tribulation period, there must be uh, some uh, record of that or uh, instruction for that, but nothing. Silence. After you get past chapter 3 in the book of Revelation, you don't see the Lord's church again until uh, the wedding day. But you see a lot about the Jews, don't you? Yeah. Prophecy has to do with the Jews. And that throws a lot of people off. Yeah. We uh, read where it's a time of Jacob's trouble. Yeah. Jacob's trouble. Trouble for the Jews. Not so much in the first three and a half years when uh, the old Antichrist makes a, <clears throat> an agreement with them, a treaty with them, and everything's not so bad, but oh, when he turns on, it gets bad. Time of Jacob's trouble. You and I have the blessed hope of Christ coming in the clouds. But in, <clears throat> we'll go back to, I got away from that. In verse 2, it says, For yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night. Again, he's <clears throat> trying to help these uh, people along. Yes. They were so troubled. Amen. For when they shall say peace and safety, then sudden destruction cometh upon them as travail upon a woman. Uh, with child and they shall not escape. Some will argue, well, see there, that, that's talking about the tribulation period. Well, <clears throat> if I believe that 
Jesus was coming in the middle of the tribulation, which would be three and a half years. The day that the tribulation came, I could put down on my calendar three and a half years ahead. This is when Jesus comes. But he says in verse 2, he's coming as a thief in the night. So, you know, those two things uh, don't go together. But ye, brethren, are not in darkness, that that day should overtake you as a thief in the night. And I'm telling you right now, when that tribulation period starts, that's going to be a dark day. You and I are living in the light of the Lord Jesus Christ right now, aren't we? Though we talk about dark times, it's not dark, nothing like that. Like that's going to Because we still have that blessed light. And we as the saints of God are, are here who uh, we shine as lights. There's some light here. There's some saved people here on this earth that can be nice to people and kind to people and helpful to people and encouraging to people and uh, able to uh, instruct them in the Word of God and all this, but in that day, no. Be two witnesses out uh, <coughs> preaching the Word of God. And so forth, but not like it is now. Even in this dark day, you and I live in a blessed day. Amen. I was a dark soul at one time. And look at me now. Look where I'm at now. Praise God. Amen. Praise God we live in a time like this. But Darkness uh, is coming. He says, uh, ye are the children of light and the children of the day. We are not of the night nor of darkness. Therefore, let us not sleep as do others, but let us watch and be sober. Watch for what? Watch for the Antichrist or how you watch for the Antichrist? You're wasting your time if you're watching for the Antichrist. Amen. You're wasting your time if you're trying to figure out who that was. Yep. Several years ago, I thought it may have been Christian Leitner. Yeah. If you're not a basketball fan, you don't know what I'm talking about. <laughs> but, no. no, we don't know who he is. We don't, we don't know anything about that. We can guess, we can talk, we can do whatever. But we're wasting our time in involvement in that, our time is to be spent in watching for Christ and a sober life. Watching for Christ. You know, the Bible does not tell us to look around your redemption draw of nigh. They say, look up. Look up, Christ is coming in the clouds. And I sure wish he would come today. Amen. I wouldn't have to drive all the way back to Kentucky. <laughs> Go riding on up into heaven. Whew. What encouraging words he, uh, he gives to the saints. Just the opposite of what these deceivers were who were signing his name to these letters. They, they weren't helping them in. You know, we, we need help, don't we? And as Brother Mark mentioned, we find that in the Word of God. So, uh, to know that Christ is coming and coming soon uh, is a great benefit uh, for the children of God. Yes. Let us who are of the day be sober, putting on the breastplate of faith and love for a helmet, the hope of salvation. 
Now, <clears throat> the doctrine of the imminent return of Christ does not give us liberty to sit back and do anything or nothing. You know, some people, uh, they, they just want to go too far sometimes. I knew a guy, he, he said, well, there's no sense me uh, fooling with life insurance. There's no sense me fooling with health insurance. There's no sense doing this, and this, and this, and this. I said, well, I said, we still got to live. Yeah, yeah. And though we believe and hope that Christ may come back today, I said, it may be 100 years from now. We still got to live, and isn't that what Paul was saying? He's talking about the rapture, and he's talking about leaving here, and he says, but uh, we're the day, we're of the day. Uh, be sober, put on the breastplate of faith and love, and for a helmet, the hope of salvation. Go ahead and live, but live knowing the Lord's coming. For or because God hath not appointed us to wrath. Amen. Amen. Don't worry about all this. Get that out of your mind. You're not going through that. You're not going to suffer in God's wrath. He's coming and he's going to take those who are alive and remain home. And that's our hope. I hear people talk about that all the time. <laughs> Just heard somebody sing about that. That's our hope. Whatever happens, he's coming. But God had not appointed us to wrath, but to obtain salvation by our Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us, that whether we wake or sleep, we should live together with him. Wherefore, comfort yourselves together and edify one another, even as also ye did. I don't know about you, but I think that's pretty comforting. <laughs> we, we face a lot of things in this life. May go through some terrible things in this life, you know, the way we view things. But we can still comfort one another and say, God is going to deliver us from that wrath. Amen. He's coming. Whether we're alive or whether we're dead, He's coming. We die and they bury us and put us in the ground. We know he's coming. Amen. And if they do that, we'll come back with him. Won't we? <laughs> Those bodies will be raised up out of the, the grave. And those who are alive will uh, be ushered up to heaven, caught up to heaven. People have a word, a problem with rapture. Well, you can't find rapture in the Bible. Well, you find caught up in there. Yeah. <laughs> That's what it means. <coughs> some people say youans and some people say y'all. They say youans up home, Georgians say y'all. We know what you mean, <laughs> every one of us. Every one of us are going to be caught up, whether we're dead or alive, and go to be with the Lord. <clears throat> so, uh, hopefully, uh, these have been comforting Amen. words. He says in uh, verse uh, chapter 4, and we'll close with this. But I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that ye sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. 
I preached a funeral for a 16 year old boy one time. He died drunk in a car wreck and they buried him beside the house and the parents were so distraught they didn't come to the funeral home or anything. When we got there with the body, it took them almost an hour and it was just like from here to the uh, end of the fellowship hall out there, an hour to get from the house to where they was going to bury him. I mean, they, they were distraught. Well, they didn't have hope. They didn't have hope. I've preached funerals of people, oh, that boy himself, I just didn't have much hope. And that's, that's a sad thing, isn't it? That was a sad thing for those parents to bury that boy knowing he went out of this life drunk. Well, the sad part is he never, as far as anybody knew, never made a profession of faith or anything like that. So there was their hope. Now you go to a funeral of a saved person, there's hope in it. Yes, sir. And you stand there and you think, well, they died before the Lord came back, but that body's coming up out of the grave. When he comes back, that body's coming up. If we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also were sleeping, Jesus will God bring with him no soul sleeping. Amen. I went to a funeral one time of a woman I knew and the preacher was talking about soul sleeping and I was going to get on to him after the service was over and the uh, undertaker friend of mine beat me to it. <laughs> he said, I usually don't say anything as an undertaker, but I'm going to tell you right now that uh, Belsey, they called her, Belsey's in heaven. And she's not in that grave. And uh, I appreciate that. Amen. <laughs> but the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. I'm not listening for the trump of the Antichrist. I'm not listening for the voice of the Antichrist. I'm waiting and longing to hear the voice of God and the uh, trump of God rather than the voice of the archangel Amen. to be caught up together with the Lord uh, in the clouds is what it says. Amen. 